This is my personal opinion about the 2012 end of the world controversy. We have this controversy because the Mayans in South America, those people that made beautiful cities on top of mountains, had a calendar. They're pretty smart people. And they had an accurate calendar, and their calendar ended at 2012 on December 21st, the beginning of winter. Also, a guy called Nostradamus, a guy who makes prophecies, well, people believe him because some of his prophecies sound accurate and it appears that they've come true. And he predicted that the world would end at the same time. I'm not quite sure if the Mayans predicted the end of the world, but their calendar ends at that date. Well, I don't think anything supernatural is going to happen. I don't think a big asteroid is going to come from space and blow up the world like it did 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs died. The sky is not going to fall. I doubt there's going to be any more earthquakes than there is right now, which is just random. There's no logical reason to think that anything that has to do with Mother Nature is all of a sudden going to perk up and become uh, over-exuberated and exciting and cause more damage. But I do think the only thing that could possibly happen that's reasonable on 2012 and December 21st would be a terrorist attack. Well. The world could be expecting something like that. They're all primed, just like in 1999, when the calendar was going to go to 2000. So, it could be an opportunistic time for them. The thing that worries me in this situation is that was the fall of Russia and communism in that part of the world 20 years ago. Provinces of Russia at that time became free states, independent, like Georgia and Ukraine and many others. And these places were heavily armed with, you know, MiG fighters, tanks, lots of conventional weapons, and every type of nuclear weapon. Well, when Mother Russia wasn't paying these people who work at these army installations and places like that, all of a sudden these people needed to make money. Well, what do people do when they make need to make money? Well, if no one's going to pay them, they sell things. So they started selling everything. They even sold rides in tanks and rides in MiG airplanes. You could pretty much buy anything with dollars. You could buy the, the guns, like AK-47s. You could buy tanks. You could buy MiG fighters. And yes, a whole bunch of nuclear weapons disappeared. The American government thinks more than a hundred. So far, none have been let off in this world. And so far, no one knows for sure where they went. <laughs> That's the scary part. They could be in terrorist hands. Well, it didn't take the U.S. that long to realize this could be turned into a real world crisis. So within a year, the U.S. made a deal with those countries, and they started, they moved in there with their troops, or scientists, or whatever you want to call them, and they started taking apart and disabling and, and breaking down a lot of nuclear weapons and using the fuel and converting it, because it's very similar, into the fuel rods used in nuclear stations and doing this all at no charge for these countries. Well, this did stop the exodus of <laughs> nuclear material leaving these countries, but it was a little bit too late. A bunch of stuff did end up somewhere. Well, it's possible that the terrorists could be planning to detonate nuclear devices, maybe in the United States, maybe in Canada, who knows, maybe in England. Well, if you were going to be a terrorist and do something that bad, it would be very damaging because of winter time to do it at the beginning of winter because this will break down the infrastructure for large portions of the continent that they let off a device like that in. Like, I mean, no electricity, no heat for homes. Then people's homes become unlivable because it's winter time. Their pipes freeze and break. It would be quite a disaster, way beyond the scope of where just the radiation was and peripheral damage from the nuclear explosion. Uh, I kind of think American government is kind of worried about that too. For the last several years, they've been building these things called FEMA camps. And every, almost every major city in the States has these camps. They're just a great big like, place near a city or in a city that has rows and rows of bunkhouse buildings to hold lots of people. It even looks like in some one of the buildings in, or more in these compounds even have a crematorium because of the big smokestacks. 
And at these FEMA camps, often there's rows and rows of what looks like disposable plastic coffins. There's a big fence around these places. Well, they've never been used for anything yet. But I think if something like this happens, there'll be martial law. And with martial law executed in a country, you have no rights. If you're walking on the street past curfew, you could be shot. If you're caught stealing, you could be shot. Oh, kitty. <coughs> there could be uh, extreme political unrest within, for example, the United States. There could even be civil war. And so I think a way that the American government is going to try to control what's happening within their country if there's a big disaster like this is by putting the people of interest to them who are not following the rules into these camps. And I'm worried. We did have places like this back in World War II and we put Germans in them and Japanese people because those were the people we were fighting in the war. We treated them well and let them out after the war. And that was all fine. Uh, but these camps, these FEMA camps, they look a lot more ominous and the government's a lot more paranoid now. So if you're worried about 2012, that's what I think you should worry about is a big scale terrorist attack since nothing has happened in almost 10 years and I think they are planning a big one. I hope for the best, but <laughs> be prepared.